Hello, and welcome to Digital Ascendancy, a Powerline Info podcast series. Here on Digital Ascendancy, we're all about championing transformative digital solutions. Today, we have Chris McDonald, Technical Account Manager with Powerline, discussing the ins and outs of HPE GreenLink. Enjoy. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. My name is Chris McDonald, and I'll be your host for this podcast today. First, I would like to recognize that Powerland has recently been named HPE GreenLink Partner of the Year for the third year in a row. And this is quite an accomplishment, and we look forward to being in the running for next year as well. What do I hope to accomplish in this podcast is to provide answers to some of the most common questions we hear regarding GreenLink. So first, let's get started with a quick overview of HPE GreenLink. So HPE GreenLake, your complete hybrid strategy. Essentially what we're talking about is we're talking about HPE's entire portfolio, roughly 70 different workloads that can be delivered via HPE GreenLake. These workloads can be delivered at the edge, in a private data center, at a co-location facility, and also with plugins and ties into the public cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud through a secure open edge to cloud platform. And what the goal is, is we wanna help modernize your IT operations, give you a scale up, scale down capability within your environment and pay for uh, what you use, okay? And by that, I mean, we wanna right size the environment so that it fits your needs with variable capacity that you can grow into if required, and then come back down to your minimum monthly commit statement or reserved capacity. So first question that we're gonna address is how flexible is the HPE GreenLake model? So HPE GreenLake is is actually quite flexible. We have a number of different ways that we can approach um, sizing a GreenLake solution for our customers. from the very small single technology type of environment to a very complex multi-technology, multi-site environment as well. So depending on what you, the business outcome that you're looking to achieve, we can really uh, look to tailor a solution to your needs. As I mentioned in the previous slide, essentially the entire HPE portfolio, in addition to the HPE Complete program, is available to us via GreenLake. So flexibility-wise, we, we do have a, a tremendous amount of flexibility in coming up with a solution that would meet an organization's business requirements. So the second question is, is can it adapt to changes in our business needs and scale up or down as required? So let's take the and dissect the scale up or down as required portion first. So when we size a GreenLake solution for an organization, what we want to do is is perform an assessment of that environment so that we understand what the current utilization is within an environment. Now that utilization may be based on uh, compute units, or in this case, compute units equal memory or uh, storage measured in gigabytes. So what we want to do is we want to understand what your utilization is and then understand as well what how much variability you want to have in your environment. Um, so we have a number of different ways uh, that we as a uh, HPE partner can develop a solution in conjunction with, with our customers and with HPE to fit their needs. Now that might be uh, 80% monthly commit with a 20% variable. It could be 70-30 or it could be 60-40. Uh, in my experience, 70-30 usually works out to be a happy medium. It gives us the best price point and a 30% worth of variability or variable capacity that an organization can grow into or burst into as the need arises and then be able to retract back down to the minimum monthly commit of 70% thereby only using or paying for that variable capacity when it's in use. Of course, like any uh, long-term agreement, you have a minimum monthly commit or a reserved capacity. Uh, And that's what 
the 70% would be. So 70% is reserved. We're committed to paying for that amount. And then we have a 30% variable capacity. So it is extremely important that we right size the environment. We don't want to oversize it so that you're paying for too much in your minimum monthly commit. We don't want to undersize it terribly so that you're instantly into the variable and potentially looking to have a change order. So what we would like to do is try to establish that minimum threshold for the uh, uh, usage. Uh, and that's based on real world right sizing of your environment. And then we can have that variability above. Moving on, HPE cost, Greenlink cost management. So how is cost calculated? In this case, in the example on the screen, we have uh, HP ProLiant DL360s, uh, and those are measured in compute units. And then we have HPE Nimble HF40, which is storage, and that's measured in gigabytes. So essentially, on a daily basis, there's a metering uh, VM that will query both the servers and the storage for their utilization. They'll do that on a daily basis and take the average through the day. And then that average, uh, the monthly average is based on the daily averages. So that's how we're gonna calculate our utilization for either compute units or storage. Now, again, we have what's a, a reserved capacity and then we have variable capacity. Providing we're underneath the reserved line, then, we're paying for our reserved capacity. If we move up into our variable capacity, we will pay for the reserved plus whatever we're using out of the variable capacity. So it is a pay as you go model with that reserved capacity or minimum monthly commit. Is it truly a pay as you go based on the actual uses of resources or are there any minimum commitments, commitments or hidden charges? So I think I've already addressed the, the comment about a minimum commitment because we do still have that minimum monthly commit of 60, 70, or 80%, depending on what you've chosen as an organization. And the usage will be based on the minimum monthly commit and any utilization of variable capacity if that happens during the month. So it is a pay-as-you-go model. Are there any hidden charges? So no, there are not any hidden charges. Essentially what you pay is for your various workload types, whether that's in compute units or gigs uh, for storage. And so what ends up happening is once you've signed on to a GreenLake contract, uh, HPE will come on site to deploy the solution, assuming that is both compute units or compute aspect and storage. They will deploy that hardware and essentially get it to the point where it's ready to consume. The customer's team has a minor role to play in that process. Obviously, access to facilities is one aspect of it, naming convention, IP addresses, and, and the like that go along with configuring these pieces of hardware. The customer would have to supply that, but HPE is obligated to deploy it all. Once that's been deployed, then only after 30 days of metering would the first invoice be sent to the customer? So essentially you have no upfront costs, there are no hidden costs. What we're looking at is utilization and our minimum monthly commit. GreenLake integration. So how well does HP GreenLake integrate with our existing systems and infrastructure? So it integrates exactly the same as if you were to buy that exact same hardware as a traditional CapEx purchase you still have full access to the hardware and full control over the hardware as it's in your edge data center or co-location facility and so you still have full control over that hardware so it integrates just as as if it, you were buying it outright as a traditional capex purchase so there there is no real difference there will we may need to make any significant changes to our current setup to use it you're not gonna to have to make any significant changes other than the ones that you would normally make when implementing new hardware. For example, if you were to do something like HPE DHCI in your environment, and DHCI includes 10 slash 25 gig switches, you're going to need to be able to connect those switches back to the rest of your environment. 
if you do not have existing 10 slash 25 gig ports in the in your existing network environment that may be a change that would have to happen in order to incorporate the new hardware into your infrastructure but that would happen the same way as if you were to purchase it in a more traditional capex manner as well so while there are some changes that would have to take place those changes are the same whether it was through a GreenLake operational model or through a traditional uh, capital purchase. GreenLake performance. So what performance can we expect from HPE GreenLake? Well, I'm going to kind of refer back to the previous question. It's basically the same performance that you would expect from a traditional CapEx purchase. It's the same hardware. It's just right sized to your actual need with variable capacity. But if I required, you know, X amount of cores per compute unit with a, uh, a certain clock speed for that CPU, and then X amount of gigs of storage or terabytes of storage with a certain IOPS minimum and throughput minimum, I will achieve those the same way in a CapEx or traditional CapEx purchase versus an HPE GreenLake purchase or acquisition. So because I'm sizing it to meet the requirements of the organization, it's the, the end result ends up being the same. Performance should be the same. In fact, it should be a little bit better for you in the sense that you're paying for what you were actually require. You're not over provisioning, you're not under provisioning. And so therefore you're making the best use of that hardware. So how does it compare to our existing setup and to alternate alternative solutions? So comparing it to your existing setup, it could be a refresh of a pre-existing environment. Let's say you had uh, an HPE DHCI environment leveraging nimble HF40 storage. The most current version of HPE DHCI leverages HPE Electra storage. So while you may be decommissioning the original DHCI stack, you can still implement a new Electra-based DHCI stack, migrate the, the workloads from one stack to the other, because they're essentially both VMware stacks. You're simply expanding or having two to separate clusters and two separate storage solutions. You can do your storage vMotion slash vMotion of workloads from one to the other. The, basically the same infrastructure pre-GreenLake and post-GreenLake. And to alternative solutions. So what I would say to alternative solutions, HPE has essentially its entire portfolio as an option for GreenLake, in addition to cloud only options or cloud delivered options. When we talk about alternative solutions, some vendors are very focused on delivering only storage as a service or only a hyper-converged infrastructure or storage as a service. So what I would, what my interpretation is here is that while there are alternative solutions, they are not quite as complete as the HPE GreenLake offering, because HPE GreenLake's offering includes just about the entire HPE portfolio plus vendors that are within the HPE Complete program, giving you a wide range and variety of products to choose from for, from a GreenLake perspective. What level of management and support does HPE provide as part of the GreenLake service? So let's start with the support. If I was to purchase a HPE DHCI stack, for example, using a traditional CapEx purchase, I would typically add five-year tech care essentials as my support. If I was purchasing that same DHCI stack yet through GreenLake, I would use the exact same support SKUs and purchase five-year tech care essentials to go along with that. That would give me my 24 by 7 four-hour uh, response support. Where GreenLake does differ is in the experience level. And the experience level essentially deals with your service advisors, how frequently those service advisors are in direct contact with the customer, and how much oversight there is from HPE on, in the GreenLake environment. So for the various experience levels, we have light, entry, and standard. So light being the 
lowest level of experience. Uh, it's for those more simple or straightforward infrastructures, one site and two technologies. So again, a, a small DHCI cluster would fit into this very well. Entry is for the less complex infrastructures. Uh, in this case, let's say it's two DHCI stacks in two different locations. And perhaps we're adding uh, Zerto in there for disaster recovery or business continuity. And then standard, this is for the most complex or the most critical environments and at unlimited sites and technologies. Uh, a good example of that is we have a customer that has, you know, synergy, they have SimpliVity, they have Electra storage, they have Primera storage, they have standard rack mount servers, they have a number of different technologies, all of which are being consumed via GreenLink. And they all have different characteristics that they need to observe and different business units that leverage each of these technologies. So that's when you, we move up into the standard, this is where the account support manager, the technical account manager, they will be in contact on a monthly basis with the customer and uh, maintaining that relationship, ensuring that the environment is running optimally and making recommendations on a monthly basis to the customer. So how much of that responsibility for managing the infrastructure will fall on our IT team? That's a pretty common question. And the answer to that question is, how much of it do you want to be on your IT team? So I'll use light as the example. If we're talking a small uh, DHCI cluster for uh, an organization, you may choose to simply manage all of the hardware on your own. Um, that is entirely uh, within the realm of possibilities. Now, as you move up from entry to standard, we may start to incorporate various aspects of GreenLake management services, from the very simple uh, firmware management on the hardware to the point where GreenLake management services uh, essentially takes over the management of all the hardware and all aspects of the hardware. Now, keeping in mind that if we went to the full GreenLake managed services where HPE is responsible for the management uh, or the care and feeding of that hardware as it were, keep in mind that that is not done in isolation. That is done in coordination with the customer, in coordination with the IT team to ensure that there are no unexpected downtime, that the end result is exactly what the customer requires, that it's been tested and vetted prior to that implementation. So there's a lot of collaboration that comes with that. So we have the full spectrum from where HPE is essentially very much at arm's length and not involved in the management of the hardware at all to the point where they are fully involved and uh, invested in the management of that hardware. HPE GreenLake Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery. The first question is, what disaster recovery and business continuity provisions does HPE GreenLake offer? And the answer is, really, we have Zerto, uh, which is a disaster recovery software, and we have HPE GreenLake for backup and recovery. Those are the, the first two that come to mind. Um, I'm going to say that, that those are the first two that come to mind because we are not limited to that. We still have the HPE uh, Complete program, which includes other vendors as well that are partnered with HPE that can be included in a GreenLake offer. However, I'll focus on these HPE Zerto and HPE GreenLake for backup and recovery. So as, we, as you may or may not know, Zerto is a software that, a solution that provides disaster recovery capabilities. In other words, I can set up Zerto to replicate uh, virtual machines from my primary data center to my secondary data center. Uh, I can define a run book for my disaster recovery and I can perform test failover and failback scenarios as well. In addition to that, I can report on the success or failure of those failover and failback scenarios, thereby giving me the ability to provide that information to auditors if that may be the, uh, if that is a requirement for your business. Now, how quickly could we recover our systems and data in the event of an outage or other disruption depends on the tools that we're using. Now, Zerto, with its journal file system, 
essentially means that I could recover uh, an RTO or RPO of uh, roughly five minutes. Now, GreenLink for backup and recovery allows me to do those more long-term backups into the cloud. So my recovery time would be lengthened because of course I'm pulling it down from the cloud, but I can use both products in concert with one another. So for quick recoveries, I can be using Zerto for longer term recoveries, data that may have been purged from the production system and is solely in the backup, I can recover that from GreenLake backup and recovery. So it gives me the best of both worlds and gives me a lot of flexibility when it comes to my data protection strategies. Well, thank you for taking the time to listen into this podcast today. And I hope that it was informative. If you are looking for more information on HPE GreenLake, please contact your Powerland account manager and we'll be very happy to help you in your GreenLake journey. Take care. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to get the latest and greatest videos from Powerland when they come out. Follow us on social media at Powerland underscore CA on Twitter, Powerland Canada on LinkedIn to hear about the latest and greatest in IT solutions.